Welcome. I'm your host, Dustin. And today we have a special guest. It's Brandon Slagle, who is director of many things. You've re- actually done a lot. I went and had to go look at your IMDb because I know I've seen your works before, but I was like, wow, he's done a lot <laughs> of things. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, today. Uh, and, I've hit, and I've hit reset a couple of times too. So yeah. 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 Um, So today we're going to be talking about your upcoming film, The Flood. So I want to dive into what it's like to survive an alligator attack. Because this film was great. The (laughs) alligators were on strike when we shot. So unfortunately, I didn't deal with them personally. Um, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, Yeah, those alligators are the result of a lot of trust between the cast and the uh, and myself and the DP and the rest of the crew to you know make them seem like something was really there because a hundred percent of the time they were reacting to thin air to nothing um, in this movie. So yeah, we we all became a big happy family doing this for a month. And, you know, waste level water and rain and water everywhere every day all the time. Um, I'd say the water was actually probably scarier than the alligator. Oh yeah, I could imagine, and the sets were amazing too. And uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I can't wait for this to come to a theater near me because I want to go experience in there. Um, but before we start diving into more of this movie, I always like to kind of bring it back to where everything started with the guests that we have on the show. So, where did filmmaking um, kind of start with you? Really, when I was a little kid watching Star Wars, and I said I wanted to do that. Um, and, and around the same time, I remember being in like preschool or something, seeing a, a play. It was like Davy Crockett or something like that. And I thought, yes, that's that's it. So I, I really, aside from playing music as well, I have no real idea of ever wanting to do anything else. Um, and even music, I think, is very closely related. And that was a side step that I did for a few years. But, but yeah, there was really no plan B. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, that's one thing that um, when I talk to um, other filmmakers or people who who love movies, they always know put music and film together because it really is essentially the same thing because it's so um, DIY, doing it yourself, got the punk mentality and everything in your films, like 100 percent. Like I can tell there's a lot of guerrilla filmmaking involved, especially with this film, with how close the cast is, the sets, how it's all essentially like one location. I love single location films so i just i was so into this i'm like and alligators this is this is great (laughs) this is great it's funny you mentioned the guerrilla filmmaking aspect because the first few things i did really were um that so i'll 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 preface this by saying i went to college for writing and acting and then ended up playing music like the first half of my 20s and then when i came back to movies i i there's, there's not really, or at the time, there was not really a guidebook saying do X, Y, and Z to get out there. And there wasn't like social media or YouTube yeah. or anything like that at the time. So you really had to figure things out on your own. Um, one of the movies that had one of the most profound effects on me, of course, was El Mariachi, which came out when I was I guess, okay. like 16. And, you know, to hear that Robert Rodriguez had done that with seven grand, you know, not counting the remastering budget. Of <laughs> um, and really just himself was so inspirational because I knew this thing that I wanted to do was attainable. Um, so the first few things that I did um, for better or for worse were all very experimental and uh, essentially guerrilla style, just me running around with a, a camera shooting stuff. Even, the st- even when I would be in them, I still like position the camera or would go beat by beat with someone who was operating it to say what I wanted for the shots that I was yeah. In so I'd like to think that some of that spirit is still there because every now and then money won't fix things and you have to know how to get around it on your own. Um, yeah. So to me, that like figuring out on my own and a lot of films like uh, Vivid's, the name of one of them, and The Black Dahlia Haunting and stuff were all like a, a film school for me to just figure out how to do stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the best way to go about it, too, especially seeing everything within the last like couple of years of all like the independent filmmaking that's been coming out and going to theaters and realizing like, yeah, anybody can go out and do do this with like 
zero budget, really. And you can get into theaters now. It's crazy. Yeah. And yeah. I'm really excited to see this on the big screen. I need I need that the surround sound to feel oh, yeah. everything. It's going to be it's going to be amazing. So like, congrats on I getting think, it in theaters. Thank you. I, I so rarely get to see these in theaters. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I, I I'm, I'm on hold to fly to Asia to do another movie. So I don't know if I'll be able to, but, but hopefully I, I will. Wow. You are constantly working. I love that. I love that. That's, that's great. Don't, don't stop. Um, especially, you know, how this film was and all your other ones, there's still a few I need to go and, and rewatch, but I've seen, you know, Black Dahlia Sound, um, I saw House of Manson. I saw all those ones. And then I saw when I got the email to, you know, get a screener and watch this. And then I saw your name attached to it as well. I was like, I, I need to see this one. Yeah. It's an alligator film. And from what I've been hearing before even watching it, it's pretty hardcore. It's rated R uh, and it's, you know, absolutely bonkers. Like I saw, uh, I think Blade Disgusting was writing up on it too. And I was like this, I need to watch this. So I was so happy yeah. I got the email to go yeah, and watch there's this. No, there's no PC characters in this. These are all like down and dirty gray area. You know, yeah, bad actors from that you would see like you know Walter Hill movie from the eighties. Yeah, um, and that that was actually something I wanted to ask you too is you know fleshing out all these characters because there's a lot of them, um, especially you know you have well, a big actor to me you have Casper in here and you have Nikki and then like all these other you know um, people that are in here and everybody feels so fleshed out with the amount of time that you have with them and. Yeah. At first, I was like, "Oh, they are gonna kill everybody off, like right at the beginning." Yeah. But no, no, every yeah. like everything's so well paced. So, what was the challenges of writing um of writing all the characters out? Okay, so that, so this one was actually written by a good friend of mine named Chad Law, who's a very prolific action movie writer, and he and I had been trying to do something for many years and came pretty close a couple of times, but it just hadn't happened yet. And so, the producer of, of this movie, Damon Hill, and I had done a another movie in um, Thailand for him, which is a martial arts World War II movie called Battle for Saipan that Casper was in. And I mm -hmm. brought Lewis onto which who I've known for a long time. Um, and um, Damon, originally a different director was doing this and Damon called me saying, hey, you want to come out to Thailand again and do the script that, that Chad wrote? And I was like, absolutely. Without even <laughs> um, by the way, it's a movie with CGI gators. Like, okay. And flooding. <laughs> so, i'm kidding but um but yeah the the cast and i really i, I really appreciated they liked showing because uh, the dialogue's relatively minimal for a lot of them and the cast was really really appreciated and i appreciated the cast in that we like to find nuance and like meaning in like small gestures and their eyes and and these like small moments that make these people larger than life um, I'll say there's there's the there's a character who's a skinhead, and then there's a moment with um, an African American prisoner um, that is towards one of their fates that wasn't actually in the script, but it was too good of an opportunity to pass up. Oh wow! Um, and there's sort of a uh, now that you've seen the movie, you'll know that there's sort of an ambiguity ambiguity there. Yeah. Once one of them dies. Like, was it on purpose? Was it an accident? Was there so little things like that to, to me, you know, they're not really what sells these movies, you know, the, 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 the actors you have, the, the concept and so on. That's what, that's what sells them. That's what, what Saban and Lionsgate and whatever did, did get in the theaters, but that stuff's for me. And it's, yeah. um, I'm, I'm glad that I've been able to work with people who appreciate doing some little things that, that mean a lot. Yeah. And I can feel all of that in this film and that the moment you were talking about too, like it, it hit me hard watching that too. I was like, cause I can, I can see it from so many different ways why the, why they would be doing what they did and whatnot. But there's also other moments in the film where you kind of have to question, Oh, are they gonna, are they going to help each other or whatnot? There's always that tension. Um, so you have like the, the nature run amok essentially that's happening yeah. outside and you have all these, these inner quarrels that are happening, which I like a lot in a film when there's multiple things, multiple layers going on. So that way, like you're constantly engaged in, in this film you're, and you're always, you know, saying what's going to happen next. Is it going to be a person that does this or is it going to be a gator or is it going to be yeah. both? 
Um, so there's always these confrontations going on. So yeah. congrats on the whole team for, for pulling this off and, uh, and making, I think, a really cool movie. And everybody needs to go and see it, especially in the theaters. Yes, yes. Everyone should see everything in the theaters. It, it sounds like a cliche at this point, but you got to support the theaters. Um, yeah. There's a certain like, camaraderie and certain feeling you get from you know, being in a crowded theater and everyone cheering, and clapping at the same time. You know, I, I, hope, I hope that's something that people don't lose. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you. Someone who has 500 movies on Voodoo, most of them bought since the pandemic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, the theater experience is very, very important um, for any genre of film, not just yeah. for, you know, action, horror, suspense or anything. It's being there and feeling the energy with other people and hearing people cheer. And when someone gets yeah. like ripped apart, like, yeah, you're like, oh, this feels so good. Sitting at home and watching it, you're like, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know? you really grin to yourself, but but it's just a thousand times better. Like, yeah. um, for instance, uh, um, like the moment at the end of Avengers Endgame when uh, Robert Downey Jr. says, "Well, I am Iron Man," people go absolutely insane. I couldn't yeah. have imagined seeing that. And I actually saw that with an, at an industry screening where a lot of people usually just sit and have their arms crossed. Oh yeah. And even, like, stuffy, pretentious like executives were going nuts for that. <laughs> like the, that that's awesome. things that, that I, I I've even like looked up like crowd reaction videos of Avengers Endgame or stuff like that. Just oh, to yeah. I could I couldn't imagine like it, in the future maybe that type of thing not existing or that type of like dynamic or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um there is one thing I do want to bring up, um, is that there is a lot of CGI in this yes. film. Rightfully so. I mean, you're dealing with alligators, you know. Um, but there's also some practical in there. You know, there there are some um, pieces. I don't want to, you know, say too much. I want to spoil anything. But there are some pieces in there that were pretty well done. Um, so what what were the challenges of having to work with the CGI and also blend in sort of the uh, the practical effects that you were using? It's really, we, we would have, um, we didn't really do the thing where you like put a tennis ball on a stick and you can hear. So, so much of the performance was based on just the, the actors and the crew and everyone, like I was word vomiting earlier, just trusting each other. Yeah. Um, I think even, even if CG is perfect, like seamless, uh, Im- impeccable, if, if you don't buy that someone's really reacting to it, then it, it really doesn't work. Um, and then versus you can have shots that are maybe 70, 80%. You know, could have been a little better, but if someone responds to it the right way and the sounds good and everything, then you buy it. Um, yeah. So it was really a, a big leap of faith. And there's some shots I, I won't lie that are not my favorite, but the way that the, that the cast reacts to them makes it not matter. Or if you're invested, or if you're just enjoying the movie, then you know things like that are forgivable. Yeah, I agree. Although I, I agree. would have preferred doing everything practical because I'm one of those. People. But <laughs> um, <laughs> another thing too uh, aside from you know working with the cgi and you know having to balance the actors and everything with that i wanted to ask shooting the flooding shots that also must have been a huge challenge so how, how did you um get these shots and and make it look as good as it is shooting the water elements is maybe the hardest thing i've done in any movie so far and I had someone have a stroke on camera. Oh, so, wow. yeah. Um, I won't say which movie or what scene, but and it wasn't related to the movie, but that happened and it erased the whole footage. Um, except for maybe, say, two shots, every shot of the water um, is, is real. What you see is what we really did. Like the scene where everyone's walking in slow motion, con air style in the police station. We have the giant rain machines you see in you know, a huge movie. Um, and I was telling um, someone else that I was on with, and I hadn't, I hadn't thought of this yet, but I believe, but there's like no break from it. Like every single scene from the beginning, the water's there, whether yeah. it's on the ground, whether it's in the window, whether it's from the ceiling, whether it's outside, um, or whether, you know, you're walking around, you know, through your chest in it. Um, and it was challenging, um, on top of, you know, even some of the smaller things like the water in, in the, uh, the rain bars that we would have in windows or in the ceilings. Um, generally, most people in Thailand speak perfect English, probably better than a lot of Americans. But every now and then, 
there would be a very small thing that would mean something else. And so basically we'd say less rain and there'd be more (laughs) and things like that. Um, Or, you know, there's some scenes where the rain's actually not on just because we had to get the shot. But basically what I'm getting to is the water. I'm, I'm used to keeping a fairly fast pace shooting and the water, the setup between shots could be like egregiously long. Um, whether you were like, you know, trying to drain the water to manage continuity or fix something because a machine broke or, or, um, or refill the tanks for the water outside. It was, it was a challenge. Like every single day had a challenge with the rain. Um, wow. looking back, it's like, wow, we did it. But at the time, oof, the rain could be frustrating. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a whole like nother, even, whole nother beast. A $200 million movie. It still would be frustrating. Yeah. yeah Cause it's, it's unpredictable. It's not control. It's not like a CG creature you're putting in later. It's not like an actor that you're saying, Hey, walk over there. It does what it wants. Yeah. Well, let's put it in post. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Cause I was curious about that. I was, I was, when I was watching, I was like, wow, there's, there is literally water everywhere. And then like the outside um, s- shots too were, were crazy and watching everybody get like poured on. I'm like, this must've been a nightmare. Um, so oh, it, looks, it looks so good, but it does, yeah, it does, but I can only. And disgusting and freezing again and more disgusting. <laughs> um, there was actually, when we were shooting the scenes that were in the, the cell block, um, the only way in or out of that set, and that set was actually, that wasn't an existing thing that was built in an abandoned building. Oh, okay. Anyone I was actually going to ask you that. In Asia, we'll know that there's tons of abandoned buildings everywhere, especially Thailand. So um, we built like the basement and other things in the, this building. So it wasn't like a, a natural jail that had like a door that we sandbagged. We literally had to, because that was a, the main set that was being flooded, the only way in or out was through the ladder over the walls. Oh, and wow. I, I got, and when you have like, you know, a hundred crew members and 20 actors going in and out, you just can't wait your turn sometimes. And so minus bathroom breaks, I would just stay in there for days on end. Oh and no. Oh, I, my wow. feet like I had acupuncture done with like threading needles or something. Um, wow. It was, it was bizarre. Um, yeah. Um, Coupled with, I, I think that was because the type of chlorine that they use in, in Thailand is uh, quite palpable compared to ours. And so oh, okay. staying there too long, it, it really messes with you. Oh, wow. That, that is, that's crazy. So, so many things happening on set, dealing with the rain, dealing with having to get in and out of this, this area, um, dealing with alligators and then, you know, managing your, your cast and crew. Wow. That's crazy. Um, oh yeah, and we shot mostly overnights too, which yeah, people <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, I need to go to bed now. No, no, keep yeah. going, keep going. Sleep during the day. Exactly. That's right. I'm a night owl, so I would have loved that. <laughs> I, um, I used to be, and no, not anymore. Yeah, especially after having a kid too. You know, I know what it's like. It's you get so tired all the time as well. Um, so on top of everything else that's going on, I wanted to ask you. I know that you mentioned um, the writers that are on here, but why alligators? Because there's not a huge glut of alligator movies like there are shark movies, I guess. Yes. It, um, like, had, <laughs> I hate to say it, but had they called and said, hey, we're doing a shark movie, I probably would have said no just because I'm not interested in that. But being that it's not something that there's so many of and that my friend wrote it, it's, you know, a very attractive package, obviously. And and I'll never forget watching Alligator when I was a kid and yes. come out of the sewers. So um, which I believe that movie just had its 40th anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I think it's it's on Shudder. I think one and two are on Shudder, and I think they did something yeah. something for it. Man, I can't believe that movie's that old, but I'm that old. So <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh it's a different thing. And these are like, uh, you know, they're not just in the water. They can come out of the water. Yeah. And another reason I'm asking you is because as I was growing up um, and watching a lot of movies in the 90s and early 2000s, there was, you know, a pretty big market for for gator films. And then yeah. it kind of just like went away. And then, like you said, all the shark movies are coming out because there's so many people that yeah. I know and talk to online. They're like, I love shark movies. I'm like, 
I, I get it, but I, I can only take so much shark. I need something else. Like, come on, we yeah. got we got cocaine bear now. Now we're, we're having the flood. Um, so I'm happy to see, um, you know, essentially a part of like my childhood come back of gator films. I, I need yeah. more gator films. So I, ho- I hope yeah. there's there's more down the line in your future. <laughs> it's it's not the go to. But when you say, hey, we're doing the gator movie, you're like, huh. Different, yeah. Never mind, like class of an alligator and gator bait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so moving on, um, as you mentioned, there was a lot of other things that were happening during set that was difficult or you know was taking longer. Was there a specific shot that you can recall that was the most difficult or one that you can just remember was like, wow, this was an absolute nightmare? If it doesn't spoil oh, anything. Uh, so much of it um between the water and the overnights you get a little loony sometimes there, there was actually <laughs> one time where casper and i and we're actually like great friends we're like family friends at this point we started sniffing each other and later on we're like what are we doing <laughs> he's, like, listening to the audio i'm like why are we mad at each other um that was actually towards the end when the gator comes up to the second floor and the other character goes off and tames oh him. okay okay yeah um, and I think it's just because we were just running on empty and confused because we're both old people. Um, <laughs> there was a shot, actually. It's maybe my favorite shot in the movie where um, Nikki as the sheriff and Kim as um, one of the mercenaries go down to the uh, basement level to because Lewis's character, Rafe, wants them to make wants someone to have eyes on the security camera system to make sure it's really not working. And they go down and, you know, at this point, the character Pine has already lost his life, unfortunately, under the water. And there's this long shot where we had a, the, the red camera in a water housing um, and it was sort of treading water. And Nikki walks towards camera and the camera follows her hand down until she grabs the flashlight in the arm of the departed Pine. That was a shot, but it wasn't necessarily like we had to do a billion takes or every, anything, but just the timing of, of everything just had to be perfect. And um, I remember when we did the, the, the take that was in the movie, which pretty seamlessly follows her hand underwater. Yeah. Um, our, our assistant director, Gavin, who has unfortunately passed away since we shot the movie, uh-huh. we were both behind the, the monitor like this. We were like Beavis and Butthead, like waiting. Um, and when we got the shot that where Nikki pulls up the hand and it, and it was done perfectly, he like jumped up and cheered. Oh, hell yeah. Um, so it's one of those things that really should have been like frustrating, but ult- thankfully it had a, a perfect payoff. Yeah, that's a great scene. There's a lot of um, tension in that scene too. Like almost every scene you can say there's some sort of level of tension. You barely get to breathe in this film. I think it's probably because the water machines made it real tension. um yeah uh, one thing to go back to the the water housing and the camera one thing i wanted to constantly have is even though even though we're not always with the gators i wanted to have that sense of like if you go back to the the early friday the 13th or or halloween movies where it's the point of view of a hand pushing aside the brush when the car goes by or when they're in crystal lake or whatever i wanted to have that sense that they're always being watched even if they're not um so that's why you see, you know, the water camera is there treading water, even when the gators aren't there. Just because I wanted to, I guess, make people feel what we were feeling dealing with the damn water. Yeah. And I felt that. I really did. I was like, there's there's going to be one around the corner. There has to be. I mean, it's an alligator. They they do that. Yeah. They, they will hide. And like crocodiles do it, too. But more more all, alligators, yeah. they'll just stay there, not move. There's a, there's a scene with... um. It's, it's the scene like about an hour into the movie where they're planning on what they're going to do next. And they end up going to the second and third floors where um, the character, Big Jim, who is kind of has a, a past, like he has a, a knowledge of gators. Um, sort of I love that character, by the way. He's so good. <laughs> he's Owen, Owen, Owen O'Brien. He's an Irish actor. I, I hope to have him on the movie I'm about to do out there, too. Um, he's fantastic. He really should have his due soon. Um, he actually has a small part in that John David Washington um, Gareth Edwards sci-fi movie about AI that's coming out. Um, oh, okay. It was okay. Moving around the same time that we shot. 
Um, anyway, a lot, a lot of what he says about gators being forced out of their habitat and everything is research that he did and just threw in there to build the story better. But yeah, they're, uh, they're some bastards. Yeah. Yeah. They really are. Oh, man. There's so much to talk about in this film and I'm trying not to bring up anything that's going to spoil. Um, okay. So you said your favorite shot. And I, I, I did like that, you know, the whole suspense and watching, you know, that seeing what's going underneath the water and always feeling like you're being watched. I really, really, really enjoyed that. Um, I guess I can ask, since you've done so many other films and like, I feel like now, I guess you'd probably feel like you're, you're more of a veteran in the film and filmmaking in general than you were yeah. back when you I started. Wish my bank accounts <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you, is there any like specific challenges in this film that you haven't encountered in other films? I mean, aside from the water, um, I, I have never shot straight overnights, minus one or two days. Um, and, and those days, even those days were what we call splits, where you shoot, you start like in the afternoon and you shoot into the night. Oh, okay. I, you know, being someone that used to only sleep two hours a night and um, would sleep in a tour van and you know stay up all night watching other vans, I I, I had no idea how the overnights were going to affect me. And especially since you know so many of us, um, I had actually come early for the shoot, so I'd already been in Thailand for over a month. Oh but wow! Everyone else, just as they got acclimated to the fourteen-hour time difference, suddenly they had to flip it. And oh yeah, that must have been rough. It was really just you know managing and counseling personalities um that were experiencing this like bizarre time shift that that i was that i was too i think now i i gladly jump into something else with overnights but i think just because i hadn't done something so many it 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 crept up on me for complete no completely no pun intended <laughs> yeah well you got the film done it's going to be coming out Great film, super fun. It, it is a, a theater film. It like 100% is. You need to go watch this in, in the uh, theaters. So it's coming out July 14th. Yes. And it's going to be... Next, next week, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yep. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be in theaters and streaming, right? Is, there, is it going to a specific streaming spot? Or is it just going to be all around? You guys can go rent it wherever you want. Um, yeah, you can go to Vudu, Google Play, et cetera, et cetera. All the, all the usual suspects. All right. Yes, I'll definitely be seeing it in the theater and I'll be renting and or buying it as well. Um, so I have a couple fun questions. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for the film without spoiling too many things. And since this is a gator film, I know you mentioned alligator, but yeah. do you have a, another favorite gator film that you uh, that you grew up on or you, you're fond of? Um, I'll leave it at that, but I'll throw it. <laughs> cut out out at you and it's not gators and i'm not trying to spin the topic because that one's really my daughter's trying to join us you, you may hear some two-year-old okay. <laughs> vanity um another movie that really just gave me this and i'm probably remembering it better than it actually is but orca was another movie and it's the opening scene when they're in like this like this house that's on stilts over the water and the way that I remember it, and I haven't seen this since I was a kid, was this like this like force that was coming after you, and it was like horrifying. Watch, I'd probably watch the movie. It's cheesy now, um, but that was something else that just like with Alligator, like I, I will forever remember how I felt watching some of the scenes. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Watch now. There'll be killer whale movies. Just because. oh, there's going to be everything. I mean, uh, um, there was a joke of what was it? after Cocaine Bear. They were saying they're going to be doing cocaine something else. I'm just like, I'm kind of all yeah. for it. To be honest, I, I want some more, you know, nature run amok films because there's yeah. not that many out there right now that I can think of other than the shark films. So we, we need we need more animals yeah. in 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 these films. In inebriated animals. Um, <laughs> like, we need like crystal meth. Whale shark. Yes. Let's get some alligators maybe, maybe on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, I believe there is a, a meth gators movie being. Oh, what? Oh, alligator. I need to go. I need to go hunt that down now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go hunt that down. Um, so, other than favorite gator film, do you have a favorite horror film? 
<laughs> so here comes another deep, deep cut. Um, a lot of people, like in, in terms of something like this is the best, a, a lot of times like the answer will be something like the original Alien. But in terms of, you know, like movie that I have enjoyed the most and have watched the most, it would weirdly be the uh, adaptation of Watchers with Corey Haim, just because it's a, as, as an adaptation, it's terrible. But as a movie, it's, and being, you know, someone who was just a couple of years younger than him, um, for those of you who haven't read it, the character in the book, Travis Cornell was like 35, 40 years old. He wasn't 16 year old Corey Haim. But um, to watch that at like 14 was just amazing because it was like wish fulfillment because it was a book that I really, really loved. And then they made a very loose movie, movie adaptation that was a kid that was basically my age. So I probably watched that thing 50 times. Um, oh, wow. Even, even the sequel with Mark Singer, which is arguably a little closer to the book, you, you could say. Um, even that one I've watched dozens of times. Wow, I, so, I love hearing so, these. So just got one string. <laughs> I love hearing these responses from um, you know directors and and actors and anybody who comes on the show and ask them like, what's their favorite horror movie or scary movie? And it's always something different, and I, I love that. No one's ever like, yeah, I, I like this one, and then like everybody else does the same thing. Me, I'm I'm very traditional because uh, yeah. the one that really brought me out of there, I. My favorite movie is Halloween 1978. That's what really got me into uh, into all the horror movies. I can see my, my masks over there. That was coincidentally the first movie I saw in the theater when I was a toddler. Oh, my God. I wish I was there. Um, <laughs> I wish. My, so the story goes, my uncle, who was a teenager at the time, um, told my I, I think so. I think what he did was use my mom being slightly older than him to get him into the movie. <laughs> of course, I don't remember it because I was a toddler, but yeah, that's allegedly the first movie I ever saw, ever really saw. Wow, that's that's awesome. I'm jealous. I wish I was back then to see yeah. that. I mean, I've seen it in the theater sense, but you know, being shown locally. But I mean, you don't get like that first time experience, yeah. you know, with it first coming out and being super fresh. So that's that's really really cool. I really um, it it would be really interesting. Like, should time travel exist to go back as an adult and watch the crowd see those movies. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it's one thing to like, see. Okay. So like a few years ago, I went to my birthday's on April 26th and they've been doing this alien day LV four, two, six. Yeah. Um, and I saw aliens at in a theater in downtown LA and like it, get away from her. You bitch. Like you would have thought the place was uh, like an earthquake was happening. I would have loved to have seen that as an adult and see the audience see that for the first time. Just like, like with Halloween, I would love to have seen people react to the shape for the first time. Um, and, and just things like that because people weren't, you know, as jaded as they are now. Um, would have loved to have seen the Star Destroyer fly over in Star Wars for the first time. Oh yeah. That would have been really, really cool too. Yeah. yeah All right. No one knew what to expect. And then you see this like yeah. ship is bigger than the city. Let's, let's make this happen. All right. Well, I'm going to go contact some people and I'll get back to you and then we'll, we'll, we'll get that happening. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> um, just the same matter can't occupy the same space at the same time. Remember yeah. time it's a very important. Yes. Movie. Yes. Don't, don't, don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So that's pretty much all that I have for, you know, all the, the general questions of the film, yeah. a couple of fun questions. Now what's happening next? Like, what do you have? on the horizon. Now you said you meant you're going to be filming another uh, film yes. very soon. So I'm literally on hold right now. I say on hold because um, I thought I was supposed to have left already and I haven't left yet, but that's fine because I've been paid. Um, <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, that's, um, that's great. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to Asia to do actually in Thailand again with a, a different company that I've worked with to do a movie starring Marco Zorora from John Wick 4. Um, okay. He's the, uh, the secondary villain that, for those of you who've seen it, the, the dog pisses on. Um, <laughs> but he, he's, the, he's the guy that's always with uh, Bill Skarsgård. Um, so yeah, at one point we thought we were shooting that as of like, last month. I guess we would have been done already. Um, but just sometimes these type of movies move slow. And, and he got an offer to be in another big movie. Um, he's doing, a, uh, I think it's called The Killing Game or something from uh, J.J. Perry, who did Day Shift. I think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, um, and that's starring uh, Batista and uh, Ice Cube and some people. So he's doing that movie. I think he leaves literally any day. And then, then, and then we're shooting in Thailand in, in, uh, in August. But I'm going to go prep probably, I guess, next week at this point. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's coming up. My, my other love, aside from like horror and science fiction movies, was always was like 80s action movies and martial arts movies. So I love those two. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of a cliche in, in that regard, but uh, but yeah, so so this is it's something I'm, I'm really looking forward to, and it will have the most uh, in terms of martial arts and hand to hand that I've had in, in so far. I'm excited. I'm really excited. It's been a while since I've seen a really good martial arts film, so I'm I'm excited yeah. to see how this is going to be. Um, Brandon, this has been great chatting with you, and you know, diving into the world of gators and uh you know gonna be keeping an eye out for future films i want to go back and rewatch some of the films that i have seen of yours to kind of you know freshen up a little bit and watch the ones i haven't seen because like i said you have a very big list of films so there's a lot to watch in your uh in your um, repertoire. you mentioned uh, house of manson we actually uh got the rights back to that recently and so a remastered uh 10 minute longer version will be on to be in Amazon's. Oh my God. I am excited. I, I will go and hunt that down and add it to my watch list if I can, because I'm going to be diving into that. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Congrats, by the way, for getting that. Um, this was a blast. And um, I'll let you off the hook. So that way you can go tend to all, any other interviews you have or go have a little bit of a break. This has been great. And uh, thank you for everybody who you know helped get this together. I love doing, doing interviews and, and talking to you the directors with their movies that are just coming out and being able to watch them before anybody else is always a, a really good <laughs> perk <laughs> you know before all the trolls show up the worst movie ever yeah. um, <laughs> how many worst movie ever's can you guys see like every day there's all of them <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this has been a blast brandon congrats on everything and everything you'll be doing in the future i will let you off the hook now and we will see everybody in the next one Thank you very much.